Yeah, I'm, I'm Aiden Mattis. I am the host of The Lore Lodge, which is a YouTube channel that I started by accident. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's I talk about missing people. I talk about uh, folklore, history, religion, and uh, recently Bigfoot a lot for some reason. That's why we actually have a poll today. Oh, good God. Uh, yes, I have, I have a poll <laughs> up today. I asked, what is more elusive? I said, "Is what is more elusive? Bigfoot? or an honest politician. So you can go in the live chat right now and vote who you think, what, what is a more elusive thing to find? Thoughts? I mean, having been in both the political world and <laughs> the uh, the Bigfoot um, you know, world, I, I've seen a lot more evidence for Bigfoot than I have honest politicians. So <laughs> That makes perfect sense. And I'm not even somebody who really believes in Bigfoot all that much. So okay. <laughs> tells you all you need to know. Which cryptids do you believe in? Uh, I, I have a... I take a stance that I think a lot of these folklore creatures, cryptids, if you want to call them that, um, all of that, I think a lot of it comes from probably something in our deep past that was there, maybe other hominids, maybe something that survived longer than we thought along those lines, and that a lot of what we see as, you know, monsters and things in folktales come from things that were real that maybe weren't exactly what we see them as today, but something... For example, okay. like with technology today, there's stuff we know today that 500 years ago would be magic. I think it's a lot, a lot along the same lines in most Do cases. Do you think that dragons uh, existed? I am so, so lost on dragons as a concept. <laughs> um, I, that's one I've been, people have been asking me to dive into and I've been meaning to. Um, I think that the idea that they might be the result of people finding dinosaur bones and not really getting what they were is, mm -hmm. is possible. I. Uh, but you also see dragons um, in a lot of mythology from really all over the world, and it changes is is the most interesting thing for me because Chinese dragons, you know, these long, slender, you know, they yeah. carry a pearl, things like that. They fly around the sky, and then if you look at the Welsh dragon on the flag, it's a very different kind of dragon. So it's it's hard to say with those. I think it's in the same vein. It was probably there was an animal that we would recognize today as a dragon, so to speak, that over time morph throughout folklore and folk tales and things like that okay okay uh we're gonna get actually we're gonna get more into it because i want to talk to you for a little sure. bit about all your work and everything before we get started guys could you hit the like button on this video could you subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already especially if you're new also if you're new if you came to join us today <laughs> because you watch laura lodge you'll see right down there that is called the crisis meter and every time someone super chats uh the crisis meter goes up and as it gets closer to $100, we get what is called a crisis party. So if you want to super chat, all of the donations go down there. Also remember $20 and over, we will interrupt the conversation and we will read that super chat right on the air in the moment. And then the goal after that is to try and get back to your train of thought as quickly as possible, which we're getting better at doing as we go. So guys, just go ahead and follow this channel, like the video, leave a comment on it. We, we hope you uh, enjoy the show today. I wanna get more information uh, Aiden, about your sure. background. Sure. Yeah. Um, do you have specific questions, or you just want me to go no, into no, it? Just, uh, I want because I want to ask uh, how you got into what you do. Because, like I said, I was talking earlier about how between shows like this and shows like what you do, they're kind of pocket spheres yeah. of so between social media and then YouTube and all of these entertainment platforms. It's very interesting to see how people come to be interested in what they tend to cover. And I don't know if it's really. See, he just got to see his first. Uh, <laughs> He, he just saw the first um, crisis, uh, first donation from uh, the money guns. Woo. I went. I'm not I wanna, ready. <laughs> I want to know what your background is and if it informed how you got into what you got into. Sure. I mean, I, off the bat, I'll say this: I was growing. I'm 25 years old, so I was growing up in that time period when, you know, uh, Ghost Adventures and Taps and Ghost Hunters, Paranormal State was my favorite. I ended up going to Penn State. Paranormal State was Penn State students. Um, so I was interested in all that stuff from a very young age. And then as I got into college, uh, it, it transitioned more over into researching history and folklore and religion, things like that. And then coming out of college, uh, right in 2020, I had a lot of time on my hands to... Because, that, see, that he, there it is again. I'll get You'll used be, to it eventually. You will, you will get used to it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's, uh, there was that already that interest, and I went to school, I got a degree in medieval studies, and I uh, then went on to, hast thou pity for the gourd? I uh, love no, that he they're just, here. He just, he just read it, he got it right there. Mary, do you, do you want to read it, to oh. reiterate? 
<laughs> uh, yeah, we got that from Obi Wan. <laughs> Obi Wan. I can explain that one if you guys want at some point. Um, but yeah. he said, uh, "What did he say, Mary?" Hast thou pity for the gourd? Do you want to explain it? What does this mean? Yeah. So uh, I do a show called the Weird Bible Podcast with Wendigoon, yeah. and that's the Weird Bible on YouTube. If you want to follow it, um, and that's a monthly podcast. But we were covering the story of Jonah and the whale. And in Jonah 4.9, there's a moment where Jonah's sitting up on a hill looking down at the city of Nineveh going, why is it not being smote? I was, I was expecting to see fire and death and destruction. These people are horrible. After he just went and, you know, they were basically yeah. like, you know what? You make good points. We'll, we'll be better. Uh, and God gives him a, a, an ivy or a plant. It doesn't say specifically what. It depend, well, it depends on which translation you're using. But an ivy, a plant, something along those lines. And then he has it wilt because Jonah's sitting there for too long expecting something to happen. And Jonah gets really upset that he doesn't have any shade anymore. And God very matter-of-factly goes, doest thou well to feel pity for the gourd? And Jonah's like, yes, actually. In fact, I think I'll kill myself. <laughs> Which is just... We were sitting there reading it and we started going through all the different translations and it's like, is it right to be angry for the plant? <laughs> just these, these little things that for the Bible are really weird sentences. Um, Does the Bible inform a lot of your a lot of your work? Yes, definitely. Um, huge fan of Michael Heiser and sort of this idea oh, that the okay. the Bible. I know why yeah. Wesley <laughs> wanted to talk to you now because he loves Michael Heiser. Yeah, Heiser's great. Unfortunately, he just passed away a few weeks ago. Um, you know, so rest mm -hmm. in peace to him. He had he pancreatic did. cancer. But uh, yeah, Heiser has been huge for me because there's a, a a significant amount of the Bible that when you look into it is not. The simple Sunday school, you know, believe in Jesus, you go to heaven, don't believe in Jesus, you go to hell, do good things, or if you do bad things, the devil, like, there's a lot of stuff about, you know, spiritual warfare, and the time before the flood, and what angels do, what demons do, uh, the heavenly host, the stuff about how God divides the nations among the princes before yeah. any of this stuff happens, so there's a lot of stuff in there that is far more complex and far more interesting than a lot of people give the Bible credit for, and when you look at that stuff and how, you know, then you start looking at Phoenicians and their religion and the Mesopotamians and the Norse pantheon and the Greek and all that, you start to see a lot of parallels that it seems like basically everyone in that area of the world has similar stories to an extent. And I think that's fascinating as, as somebody who loves mm -hmm. folklore and history and all of that. I love it. So then I actually have a question. How accurate do you think history is as opposed to what's been reported? Oh, boy. Uh <laughs> I think I will say also, this. Also, at this Wait, point, does it matter? Yes. I, I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm not asking for a percentage warning, uh, amount or anything like that, but maybe, yeah, a percentage amount, if you had to guess. Um, it's, it's so hard to say, because history in, in many ways, history is, is actually like science in that we are always learning more. We are always discovering new things, new topics, and... You start to you start to uncover things that might turn the clock back. For yeah. example, uh, one guy who's been getting a lot of flack recently. I just did a show with Mini Minuteman about this. Is uh, Graham Hancock, who's the guy behind Ancient Apocalypse, Fingerprints of the Gods. He's been on Joe Rogan like eight times. Um, I think he's got some very interesting points. At the same time, a lot of archaeologists are not really on board with it, and the reason is that there's there's a little tiny bit. There's a a few shreds of evidence that we might have been a bit more advanced before the end of the Ice Age than we thought, and that climate change destroyed that. Oh, because no, there was an aggressive, <laughs> There was an aggressive amount of climate change mm -hmm. uh, at the, the, the very beginning of what's called Meltwater Pulse 1B. Now, it's not, it's not like massive tidal waves. Like some, Sometimes Graham has said some things that imply that. You're still, you'll, get used, yeah. you'll get used to it, I promise. But it is a like, pretty quick sea level rise. Yeah. Like several feet in a few years and then it starts to you know become more consistent over a longer period of time you know a, like a percentage of an inch every year so when you look at that all right well there's there's something to chase down that's the that's the beginning of the thread and you want to chase down where that goes we see a lot of the same thing for example until uh i don't remember exactly when vinland the vinland site lanzo meadows was discovered but prior to that we thought columbus was the first european to reach the americas and then we definitively proved, no, the Vikings got there 500 years earlier. So that's, that's why it's hard to say how much of history is true and real. Yeah. I guarantee you 80% of historians are trying to tell you the truth. Okay. They're doing their best to tell you the truth. Okay. Then there's probably an extreme 
you know, in and it's not even like ten percent on the right, ten percent on the left. It's it's really kind of a circle yeah. like, of people who are trying to make manipulate. a point, yeah, trying yeah. to manipulate history to make you feel a certain way, believe a certain thing, rather than give you the truth, which yeah. is what we try to do on our channel on our shows is. What can we tell you that is as true as we can possibly get, as close as we can get, and then what questions do we still have left over? Okay, since you mentioned Heiser, I just want to ask, like, thoughts on the Nephilim? I don't know. I am... Go off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I personally am of the opinion that that, that, that passage, Genesis, uh, you know, the, basically Genesis 6, 1 through 5, I think, are about a a mixed race of angels and human beings i there are a lot of people including heiser who don't quite take that exact line uh heiser is also very much against uh zechariah sitchin's beliefs that this were this was the, the anunnaki and the planet nibiru and all that um for me i think that what it's describing the, the only other time in the old testament that the term sons of god is used and i don't have my bible in front of me but basically what it says is uh, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they made wives of them that all, of all that they chose. Well, the only other time in the Old Testament that sons of God is used is to talk about angels. In okay. that, that exact... From that, that exact translation. That exact right? translation, yeah. So you do get another time. So for example, Nephilim, the term Nephilim gets translated as giants. But then Goliath is also <laughs> called a giant. The Rephaim are also called giants. But if you look back at what the Hebrew words are, they're all different words. So why did the writers of the Septuagint decide to translate Nephilim as Gigantes? Well, they contextually were a hell of a lot closer to it than we are. So if 70, this is the tradition, if 70 Hebrew scholars decided that what Nephilim means is giant, then we can in, in, infer that the Jews believed that there were giants before the flood. Now, does that necessarily mean that it's the half angel, half human? Not really. If you look at the book of Enoch, it does say that. And we don't know exactly when Enoch comes from, but the earliest date we believe it was written down was around 300 BC. And then, of course, the version we have today is an English translation of an Ethiopic translation of a Greek translation of Hebrew. So a lot get lo gets lost along the way. This is probably oral tradition for a thousand, several thousand years even. So for me, I think, I think that given Enoch's existence, I think the half angel, half human description of Nephilim makes the most sense. Now, I am not at all saying that there is scientific evidence these things existed. I'm just saying theologically, <laughs> theologically, that is my opinion. But that's not everybody. But for me, you know, I think that was real and and I, <laughs> you will get used to it. I yeah, I know, I know. I, I think it's that was that a real it's thing. Pointing directly yes. at you and yeah. not us. Yeah, we, yeah. we kind of have it lucky. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Sorry. But I'm, to be clear, to be clear on one thing, Enoch is, in my opinion, not scripture. It is it's apocrypha. It is not scripture. I do want to ask, okay, I want to draw this back into pop culture because that's what this is. This is pop culture crisis. Mm -hmm. What do you think, given all of your interests, all the things that you follow, all the things you uh, that you report on, talk about, what would be your favorite examples of these types of stories in popular culture, whether it's movies or television? Oh, and I wish that we had talked about the X Files. No, I have that. Today. I have that on my my yeah, because uh, I I I went on about a twenty minute rant the other day about how <laughs> the the rebooting the X Files okay. is an absolutely terrible idea, and it should be it should be just stopped right right now. But I want to ask you: Are there any movies, television shows, anything like that that seem to be uh, above and beyond for you? Specifically, the first five ep or five seasons of Supernatural. Okay. Oh, people in the chat are gonna love that. The remaining the, the, ten ep the remaining the remaining ten seasons of Supernatural were entirely unnecessary. I watched all of them. Uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you right now. Like, I, I'm, that's one of those shows for me. I've tried it three separate times. Every time I get like three episodes in because it's it's right up my alley. Mm -hmm. I was like, they're they're on this trip across the country. They're stopping in all these small towns. It's very X Files. In it the is. Beginning. It's, like it's like it's all small towns that are just basically Vancouver mm -hmm. parading as small towns in America. It's right up my alley. But I. I just can't seem to, to to stick it out. Yeah, it's it, it's one of those shows that I I think the reason I love it so much is that when I started watching it, I was 12 years old, yeah. and what we would do is on Friday nights. This was back when Netflix still mailed you DVDs. So mm -hmm. for the kids in the room, 2011 or so, um, this was when Netflix still mailed you DVDs. We would get the DVD each week. We would go to my friend Bryson's house, sit down. 
gather it's if about you, the ritual <laughs> yeah we would gather we'd have our pizza we'd have our popcorn our sodas and all that and all these middle schoolers would sit and we would watch a couple episodes of supernatural get ourselves thoroughly frightened of everything and then go outside <laughs> and play manhunt in the dark for three hours um so for me supernatural early on was like a thing we did as friends and then as we got older got out into college and everything it was just a show that we were still keeping up with because it was something to connect us back to our childhoods it's so funny, for me it's nostalgic the x-files did that for a lot of people as well uh as yeah. the show went on it kind of continued on and as they got into college and things like that they would still make it part of their friday night routine and it's funny because i've been re-watching I, I started re-watching it again after this announcement came through that they're remaking the x-files and the jersey devil episode is right there in the in the first season and i figured that would be up your alley if, if we're talking cryptids and things yeah. like that because that's essentially is that supposed to be sasquatch in that episode basically it's a it's a large man that they can't really uh it's great but it's like i i, I was wondering that, also that is the original version of sasquatch by the way that one it, yeah. is is the the idea of like larger than normal human beings who yeah. live out in their own tribes in the woods and the mountains separate from us yeah that was the original sasquatch the natives i love i love those early seasons of the x-files when they're mm. when they're in these small towns not yep. the not the not the overarching conspiracy episodes i love those in the beginning but as i got older i started to realize that it's the ones where they go to the small towns and all these things happen that's where you get the stuff that's actually fun yeah. to watch uh, also just a little that, vignette style yeah yeah and also you said that uh, national treasure is one, of, one of my favorite movies there you time. go. They, would you know that they they remade that, in the, or they've uh, they've done the the reboot? I have no idea what you're talking about. Exactly, ignore it. Pretend, pretend, <laughs> what are you? What are you? What kind of blasphemy is this? So uh, we got a bunch of stuff to talk about today, guys. We're going to talk about Guy Pierce. We're going to talk about his comments. He he made some very very controversial comments that weren't controversial at all uh, because they involved um, trans actors. So we will talk about that. Also, Mary, there is a twenty dollar one right there. Uh, from Christine. Christine Piombino. Oh, good God. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Bennett. <laughs> oh. Thank you for hosting Aiden. <laughs> there you go. Uh, nice. Uh, actually, Taylor, Taylor's dad was in the chat the other day when she was uh, when, when she was on and when, when you were gone. Like, her dad was, like, in the live chat talking the whole time while Taylor was doing the show. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> uh, so we, we've got that. We're also going to talk about the fact that reality TV is essentially, I don't know if you'd call that the Antichrist, but it's, uh, it's bringing down America little by little. Every little day, a new show is announced that seems to be destroying this country. Uh, we're going to talk about yeah. Florence Pugh and the, degre uh, the degrading circumstances from which she had to make Midsummer, and we're going to tie that in to uh, Amelia Clark and stuff to do with Game of Thrones. We're also going to talk about this hilarious story, and I do, uh, as, a, as somebody who has a, a bunch of pictures over here of celebrities who are what I call tax heroes, <laughs> such as Wesley Snipes, we're going to talk about these OnlyFans models, these twin OnlyFans models who are being screwed over by Justin Trudeau and the Canadian oh, tax system. Got right one there. from Korean George, yep. said Supernatural's angel death effect was so cool with the wings burnt into the ground. Also, I've been a longtime viewer of Weird Bible Podcast, and Aww. shout out to Linda C. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Korean also, George. <laughs> also remember that in Lucifer has Mark Pellegrino, who is a based libertarian. Oh, who's, I uh, love Pellegrino. He, he's, he's fantastic. I would love to have him. There, there it is. Crisis party already. I'm is, I gotta get me one of these. <laughs> yes. Uh, you'll be able to. You'll be able to see oh, it no. from the. <laughs> it's not as bad. Uh, okay. <laughs> that, that was pretty good. That's pretty good. I, yeah. I toned it down after the other day. I, I toned out the beginning. I made the the beginning sound even louder. It was like an explosion. <laughs> my 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 biggest joy here at this podcast is every week I change the crisis party sound effect. Mm -hmm. See that. I changed the crisis party sound effect so I can scare the crap out of everyone who has to come right. in here and be with it. It's one of those little joys in life yeah. that I have. So we're going to talk <laughs> about all that, guys. If you are ready, Mary, we'll get right well, into okay. it. Well, okay. <laughs> Wait. Before we actually like, <laughs> talk about anything okay. seriously, I just needed to ask you one more question. Sure, go for because it. Because my younger brother is just really into the Mothman and okay. Point Pleasant and everything. And he's like been there. He's been to the museum. We have and a video has, on like, it. The merch and stuff. So like... I don't know what uh like what's your take on it what do you know about it sure so i mean first of all your brother we have a video on it on the lore lodge you should check it out um yeah goes through the whole story and all of the like reports and everything um but yeah for for me i i'm i'm willing to believe i'm, okay. I'm willing to believe uh now exactly what are we talking about here there was a uh derelict military ammunition storage facility nearby 
So one po one one theory is that the Mothman was either uh, a a like test flight suit of some sort that mm -hmm. they were testing in Point Pleasant. Um, another one is, of course, that it was just an owl. But I uh, there's That's a big owl though. It will be a big owl. Um, it's described as being you know six feet tall, a wingspan of six to seven feet, flying you know over people's cars and things, and then nobody sees it after the the bridge collapses. Which on the one hand could be that they had more important things to worry about than the Mothman. Uh, on the other hand, you know maybe it actually is some sort of angel of death, which is the one of my favorite theories for it because there are sightings of black birds and the mothman and dragons and things like this all over the world right before bad things happen the one about chernobyl appears to be a uh hoax there apparently there are no actual recorded sightings of a mothman or a black bird or something like that uh, around chernobyl right before the disaster happened but there are some credible reports of people seeing something flying around like in mexico city uh there was one um in point pleasant of course <laughs> part of the problem with part, part of the thing with Mothman is that everyone refers to Mothman specifically as the Mothman, and a lot of people yeah. don't look into the possibility of a broader topic. It's not there. necessarily a moth. Yeah, that it's not necessarily just you know the Mothman is Point Pleasant, and then everything else is something else. It could yeah. be that we're dealing with other okay. other things. Okay. I, I do like the flight suit idea personally. I think that one's pretty cool if you're looking for a a non supernatural explanation because when you think about the timing and what was going on in the world the u.s government the u.s military was doing all sorts of wacky stuff so i think that the idea that the mothman I mean, may have been they never stopped so. yeah exactly <laughs> uh i think the idea that the mothman may have been some sort of experimental flight suit technology is a cool one but also for me i'm looking at it like i would not be shocked at all if you're in fact i, I would be I, I would lean towards the fact that this is something that people are collectively seeing before tragedies and you know for, for reasons that we may not understand but be a demon demon angel um you know i i think i the fact that it appears before bad things happen as a warning would imply to me that it's not demonic though mm. thanks for watching listen to full episodes of pop culture crisis on spotify keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show bye guys